It is 5.01 p.m. on Monday, October 18th. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting at the Memorial Building. All commissioners are in attendance, as is General Manager Sullivan. Are there any uh, modifications to the agenda? I have one, which uh, I think I sent to everybody the email that I re received from Shari Cornish about holiday lights. Did yeah. Yep. Uh, you didn't get that, Matt? No, I just didn't understand one of the couple of your words. Oh, I said I sent. Do you want to sit over here? No. It's, okay. It's um, one of these things. Yeah, I know. Well, we need to keep them on. There's a sign on the door that says everybody needs to wear a mask in here. Yeah. Um, but. I have uh, my chin. Help no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, anyway, the, um, there's a request from at least one of the select board members, who's a member of, I guess, the town, the downtown commission, about holiday lights and, oh. and HED's involvement. And I'd like to add that to the agenda. My suggestion is that we do it before the Billings Road MOU, or we can do it right after the Billings Road MOU. Uh, but somewhere's in that vicinity. Yeah. Um, and yeah. my guess, and, and I'm just thinking about Jim at this, at this point, is that we are not going to get to the net metering bill review oh, yeah, that's at, this, at, this, at this meeting. No, we will, we will get to it. We will get to it, but not at this meeting. Yeah. Um, that's what we're doing. Well, the other alternative. I'm not saying today. I'm just yeah, saying I mean, the other alternative, if we're going to do it, is I would suggest that we do it before the executive session so that Jim doesn't have to stick around. We can do it another time. I'm just saying, if you want to do it sometime. Yeah. So, my, my suggestion is that we do it at our next meeting. Okay. Um, okay. So, as amended, is there approval of the agenda? Mm -hmm. Any objection? Move. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. And then we have minutes from the August meeting, not the September meeting. I would note that the form is a little different than what we had been doing historically, where we, you know it's, it starts including attribution to people, to specific people saying, having said things. We have a recording of the meetings, and I, I just wonder, since we act as a board um, and and not as individuals, and that when you start summarizing discussion it invariably you leave out something that some you know that one person may think is important so my suggestion I'm not say, saying that we should do it this time but just as a general matter I think it's fine to indicate the topic that was discussed but it probably is sensible not to say anything more unless you know it's something where we've where there's something is a point is something else is going to happen as a result of it that, that's my thought. I don't know if other people think differently. So you just want to see discuss the matter. Right. In other words, in other words, just as a, for example, with, with this, um, you know, we could say that, that Chris Goulet prevent, presented a review of the 2019 and 2020 audits. Uh, you know, there was board discussion. But not you know, particular questions that arose. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not suggesting that we <laughs> that the minutes be rewritten here. I didn't have any, I don't have any issues. issues with 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 yeah. these. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, a, motion to approve the minutes. a second. A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Here. The minutes are approved. Okay. Well, since we have no one from the public, there is no public comment. Unless Jim would like to say something. I don't think anybody has a problem with changing the minutes in the manner that you just said, including me. Uh, so. 
I don't know. I don't think. I think these minutes we just approved the way they were written. Great, but maybe you could take that paragraph that you're and give me an example of how you prefer to see it. And then that, sure. That sure. would be great. So. Um, and it's critical because I'm transferring this all over to Miranda, which is why we don't have any minutes. For I'm sorry, to Miranda, you said? Yeah. And who is Miranda? Miranda is one of the office okay. ladies. So who, as long as you're raising, who are the office staff now? And what are their positions? <coughs> so it's Shara, Miranda, okay. Jessica, and Karen. Shara, Miranda, Jessica, and Karen. Mm -hmm. And do they all do the same thing? Nope. Okay. Two in the back office who run the general accounting system, and two in the front office who run the customer accounting system. Okay. That are the two halves of the CIS. So, so who who is which? Sharon Miranda, the front office. Okay. Customer. Karen and Jessica are the back office. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we lost them coming in at all now. Uh, just to finish training uh, Miranda, on, like there's two things left, so she'll probably be in two or three more times. Okay, thank you. Um, shall we go to the holiday lights then? Yep. So Shari Cornish sent me. Um, the email that I sent to all of you, um, apparently the downtown commission is not happy about the way the holiday lights in Harvard look. Um, and the town road crew guys don't like putting them up. And so we're being asked if we are willing to coordinate, if HED is willing to coordinate with the beautification volunteers uh, to do a cohesive display um, and uh, put them up, so have you know so have something that's cohesive, not cool lights here and warm lights there and different things. So and that would stay up then you know throughout the winter. What does it mean that they don't like putting them up? I don't. <laughs> you know, I didn't get into a discussion with right. Shari about it, um, but. Uh, she didn't put it, she said, her quote is, I expect the road crew guys will not miss this task in their winter projects. Um, so I, I guess, you know, one of the questions is, if, if HED was to do it, how much is, uh, and I'm talking about putting up the lights, and it's really a question for you, Mike, how much is involved in time, and would this be a problem? Um. I suppose it depends on what the lights are. Yeah, and I, I anticipate that the electric department doesn't do it for good historical reasons. I completely forgot about this, and Brian wasn't in today to circle back with him for the history. Um, but the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, so we're going to put the lights up. If we put the lights up the hard way, <coughs> we serve 11 towns. Now everybody's going to want us putting up lights in their town. Just why would it? Well, we don't serve the entire it? town of every town. Understood, but I mean, it's not as simple as just doing our work. That would be my immediate. Put them up. We've got to take them back down. Yeah, yeah. it's easy to do. Well, I guess, I guess it, we're you know, I think one of the things. And our guys are making a lot more money with specialized skills that. I'm not saying yay or nay about it, but I just, well, I don't know if that's something that... Well, and I, I don't, I certainly don't either. I, I would like, again, one of the things that we can do is have good relations with our towns, be part of supporting downtowns, and not every town that we serve really has a downtown. True. Um, Hardwick does. There are others that do and some that don't. Um, and if, if there is a public service that we can be providing at a s relatively small cost, my gut sense is in cooperating with town officials who've asked. I mean, not everybody has asked. 
um, I think that that's something that we should try to do if it's doable. Now, whether it would be doable this year in any case, since we're sitting here in October, and I'm guessing the lights go up next month. The proposal is to put the lights up with volunteers? Is that what I heard I, I, I don't think that's the, I think what she's asking. That doesn't seem like a good idea. The, no, I think the volunteers is, is more, there's, there's a downtown beautification commission in Hardwick. And, they're, and that's run by volunteers. It's a lot of the local businesses um, in, in, the, in the central village area. And I think the idea would be to coordinate with them to come up with a, if you will, a lighting plan. Who said this in the past? The town of Hardwick? Apparently everybody yeah. is sort of put, and people have put up their own lights and it's, yeah. and, and there's been some stuff and apparently, I have to say, I never particularly, I noticed that there are lights, I think lights are nice, I never particularly noticed them being uncoordinated. What about answering it by saying, we'll be glad to help out, and whoever's been doing it in the past, probably uh, somebody on the ground crew for the town, uh, would be in charge and will help that person. I don't like the idea of the volunteers and working with them. It's not, it's not volunteer. I think the volunteers are to plan it. Um, Is there an existing stock of lights I, that, that are put up? I, that's my sense that there are. I did not get into a discussion with, with Shari about it. Uh, there were a lot of other things going on. This just came in last week. used to help Greensboro uh, decorate with lights a great big tree. And then finally, Hardwick Electric reasonably said, you know, this is really costing us three or four hours of work, and uh, we're not going to do it for free anymore. And whereupon, Greensboro cut the tree down. It <laughs> <laughs> was approaching 100 feet tall. Uh -huh. and, you know, a fit of tea. <laughs> so, nice to be generous, but you've got to be careful there. Well, we Again. Only, we wouldn't want to land in the responsible for it. We were just assisting, you know, I mean, if we get there and mm -hmm. half the lights don't work, it's not up to us to fix them kind of thing. You know, I mean, yeah. Again, my sense was that where they need help is probably more in putting up the lights okay. than in picking out what lights to, to, to get. I don't think we, I don't think the electric department has particular expertise on what lights to get or, you know, on, uh, or that kind of thing. I think it was <clears> more a case of putting the lights up, she, maybe helping them source them. I don't know. She thinks that, that we would, you know, that you would know better where to source lights, but that. Maybe we just say, look, we'll give you one bucket truck and two men for three or four hours. And you've got to run it because we don't know how to do this. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I don't think we. I think the idea was to cooperate. That was my sense. Was to was to was to was was to work with them. And it sounds like we're lacking information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, unless you're going to give, unless we as a group are going to give them a hard no, zero. Maybe the appropriate. It's impossible to say yes when you don't know what you're saying yes to. So maybe. If the group feels like we want to do more than zero, we want to do something reasonable. We don't want it to become unreasonable. We want it to be appropriate to our capabilities. Maybe ask them, say yes, we're willing to consider, but we need a better definition of exactly what you need from us and will and and, and um, our participation should be limited to what our expertise. You know, we can't take over and lead the project. Right. We can support the project. I mean, does that work, Mike? Yeah. What what if I know, you know, Mike has a lot on his plate. Either Mike could do could meet with Shari or maybe one of the commissioners who lives in Hardwick could could meet sure. with Shari and find out more of what she had in mind. And then if if you're willing to do it, Michael, yeah. and then talk with, with Mike. Mike. 
you know, without making any commitments, but get the information and see if there's something that we can reasonably do. Um, and if it's something that, you know, just requires more planning and whatnot, it, it may be the kind of thing where we say, well, we don't have enough time this year, but we'll, you know, we'll start earlier and, we can, and we'll work with you next year. I've seen the guys, the town crew, uh, struggling with decorating the trees near the diner there because of the embankment and they don't have equipment like a bucket truck, you know. That's probably the, I mean, that's kind of the center area that they really kind of work on and get the lights in. But again, I think we need some more Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know. I think, you know. I think some of it also might be limited um, I know when I was with Citizens, we used to help the town do the stuff up in Newport. And getting outlets over here and over there and running secondaries, and it turned into a huge zoo. But if we could do something like, yep, we'll get your power right here to run your lights, and, and that's, you know. But these are all things that need to be talked about. Right, and I, 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 I don't have answers. I just wanted to bring this to folks' attention and see if there's a way that we can coordinate. I know in Stowe that the town is involved in putting up the lights and they are uniform. You know? and, but I suspect that it's not the town that's paying for them. I think it's probably Stowe Vibrancy. And they're, so, okay. Give me your information, I'll pull it and sit down with you. Yeah, and then, and then let Mike know. If, if for some reason there's something that we need to talk about, you know, if we need to have a, special meeting or something we can always do that but and we do have we do have the meeting with the select board on the 9th that's going to be a joint meeting actually that's something we should talk about um, as an agenda item um, but we could talk we could we could you know if there's something that we need to discuss more broadly with sure. the select board that would be an opportunity to do it so okay. um, so, uh, great. So did I hear Mike is the follow-up or Mike me is a follow-up on that? No, I'll do it. Okay. So he'll save you a little time and then Thanks. speak with you. Um, I'd like to amend the agenda to talk about uh, the upcoming meeting with the select board briefly. We can do that after Billings Road if that's okay with yeah. folks. Um, no, no, not other business at the end. I think we need to have a brief discussion. Um, okay. So the next item is the MOU on 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 Billings Road, uh, and I'm not sure what it was that was that you wanted to discuss, Mike. Um, <clears throat> well, I thought that we should determine. I thought you should determine what changes you might want to consider making to this thing, seeing as you are responsible for the property. Well, the MOU is in place. It's in effect. And it's in effect for another, what, this was signed in, what's the date on this now? OK, I know I'd seen a date on this. In 2003. 10 years. And so, no, so it's 20 years. So it goes, it, it's going to go until August of, um, of 2023. Right. So it's not something that we need to decide at this point. I appreciated getting it because I think it was good perspective. And oh, yeah. all the way back to the formation, it was really good, Mike, to know sort of how it all came together. Role of responsibilities, the whole bit, limitations, it was really good. Because I had, I wasn't living here in 2003. Yeah, no, I think it's good that we have this, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't think we need to be talking now about, yeah. about what we may want to do. Though we do, we should keep in mind that it does have a six month cancellation provision on it, so that if we do want to amend it, we should keep that in mind. I mean, you know, if there are amendments that we think we need to be making now, I mean, we can always ask the town to amend. Well, the first sentence says the parties agree to work cooperative, cooperatively in the planning, development, operation, and maintenance of our trails. That doesn't happen. 
period. Well, but it should be happening. Well, it hasn't. I think that's an appropriate subject for 11.9, potentially. Yeah. And, so. and, and we should probably translate that over into here's, and here's what we think would be good for both parties. You know, we should have. So it, we should have information flow. We should have periodic yeah. updates. You know, let's put whatever interval you think would be good, once a year, twice a year, and up on that trail. I mean, we want to be informed, but we don't really want to be a party to much more than that on the Arctic trails. Oh, I think we. I think maybe we do want to be more than that. Sure. Oh, I'm, or, I mean, in accordance with this. I mean, do you want to change something in the memorandum? I'm not suggesting that we change something in the memorandum. I'm suggesting that we act in accordance with the memorandum, which apparently we haven't been doing. Right. I mean, well, until this whole thing came up, I didn't know the memorandum even existed. Right. So, so well, we all know it exists now. As far as not working cooperatively, meaning specifically no notification of trail expansion, for example, yeah. But with Hardwick Electric, because I assume that between Hayes and Union and Hardwick Trails, there's been communication. Uh, I, yeah. My understanding, Vince, is that the Hayes and Union land trails were exist in existence when this MLU was written. Okay. So they, they were already kind of part of the school and the network over there, and then they wanted to expand. And the only thing that's ever been approved for expansion is one trail. The big one. And that's where they hired John Morton and paid right. him a lot of money to that And there's, you know, now there's 12 miles of trails out there that nobody on this board or your predecessors ever even spoke about. Hardwick Electric is excluded pretty much from this agreement, other than number one and two, it pertains to everybody. Which has had material impact now because yeah, of the Dillon's exactly. Road thing. I wouldn't be surprised if the select board had never seen the memorandum either. I would well, you never I, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Eric, no. Eric's pretty involved in the trail. Well, but this was, again, this was signed by folks and, and 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. So it does sound like, yeah, it does sound like a potential Maybe. topic for that. Yeah, I mean this this you know it's initial term of ten years, automatic renewal for another ten years, transfer. I, I don't like the ten year thing either, but it's you guys are responsible for the land, not me. Well again, we can't unilaterally change this. No 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 and I, and it's um when I saw it I was like holy cow these my Commissioners need to, I think the commissioners need to talk about this thing. That's why it's on the table. Well, anything that, that is being done on property that is, that we're responsible for, it seems to me we have to be involved in the discussion, starting at the planning stage um, of that. And, and it looks like that's the first recital, it's, it's an odd, this is an oddly structured document since it has operative agreements in the recitals, which is a strange place to have operative agreements, but that's... Isn't it the case that these trails have been developed over the last 10 or 15 years and we didn't know much about it, we didn't even know about this memorandum, and we were not consulted? No, well, not, well, no, no, look, no, look Eric, 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 Eric Werner knew about it. He signed this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and, how and many he, years ago was that? Eighteen years ago. But what I'm saying is that, for whatever reason, this document was stuck in a file someplace, mm -hmm. and it wasn't communicated to no one on the board. Communicated this to anyone on the board who wasn't on the board after Eric was no longer the chair. Oh, it's no so longer the general manager. I would trust suggest it was okay, then what, it might calibrate this to what's practical, but what I'd suggest is that once a year, to accomplish the communication obligations in here, we request that the trail, whatever they're calling themselves now, Hardwick Trails, 
comes to the Hardwick Electric Department one monthly meeting per year, minimum, to talk about plans and activities on the trails. And then in addition to that once a year, before there's any new construction or new development, that they come. And, and that would be it. That's a lot. Because I don't think any of us, start, starting with you, are volunteering to go to a whole slew of meetings to talk about should the trail go right or left or up or down. No, no, no. Well, I think I'm my sure. thing is that there's there's constraints now with the CPG yeah. on page 11. There's constraints on that property with the existing Act 250 permit that we have. Yep. So we are we are the ones holding the bag if something gets violated. Yep. If the Act 250 Commission starts handing out fines, they come to us. Yep. So you should all know yep. what's going on on property that you're responsible for. I, I think yep. once I think once a year is too late. Um, they they don't do that much, Lynn. Well, but it, I'm talking but. I guess what I'm concerned about is having them come and tell us after the fact. Oh no no, no that's not what I was proposing. Okay, that's it has to be before I, any. Okay, because this before be, any new because the words here are okay. The words say agree to work cooperatively. That the management development and management plan will be prepared by the parties. Yeah, and I it's think supposed the language to, is good. And it's, it's supposed to be part. part of the MOU. Do we have that development and management plan? Nope. Okay. Uh, which is a good, which is a question for the for the town, I think, at the at the meeting. Um, where, where did this come from, by the way? This MOU. Eric sent it to me. Eric sent Okay, so yeah, the, I mean, the, the I don't see with a continuing organization like Hard Rock Electric, it's and having it on the agenda and coming up on a regular basis. But with these volunteer committees, with new people all the time, keeping it at, keeping this thing visible. <laughs> Keeping them aware that they need to be in contact. I mean, that's that seems like the issue. You know, things just mm -hmm. just happen. I, I'm not sure how to. Uh, other than it has to come up at every one of their meetings or something or something. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm not. Su yeah, I didn't, wasn't suggesting that. By the way, in terms of, of of the concern about fines, the town is under this. The town is responsible. It, there's a provision in here that, that they indemnify HED uh, for any damages or claims or liabilities associated with the trail. So that's, um, but yeah, I think I think one meeting a year. Yeah, and I think it should be not just for them, but for all the little communities, like the beach community, the beach uh, committee, and press everything, property. Or the vacation, or any, any of them. Everybody should come once a year and tell us what their plans are for the year so we know about it. That, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm assuming there is no MOU for the beach. But no, but no, we like to know what they're doing. Like, they're doing a power plant. Right, so well, but I mean, the, what, what is, well, the beach That's is a, a perfect beach committee? Example. Yeah. That is such a perfect example yeah. that they wasted their money. They went out and planted these beautiful trees right under the power line, and we're going to cut them down. Unfortunately, one of them's dead already. Who gives them the right to do anything on the beach? They don't have any rights to do anything. So, so, they they but they don't own the beach. Well, they, don't they, think. They, they, they know they don't own it, but they, they, they want to run it. Well, I mean, it, it seems to me that, that that may be a situation where we need to clarify something in writing and then ha have something regular it with sounds, it. It sounds like a parallel. Though. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same, it's the same it's kind the of same thing. Because then we, can, we could have helped them. We could have said, trees look great, plant them over there. <laughs> the oh, I, I told them when they were digging the holes. I yeah. said, they're all over here. They did anyway. Why did we cut the trees? Why did we cut the trees? But it, it, having those kinds of arguments after the okay. fact is, is, is creates unpleasantness that we don't need to have if everything was sorted up front. Seems and then to how, to keep it, how to keep that information with an organization like the one in Greensboro so that they are aware and respond to it. You know, if it's not, if they don't know about it or they don't see it or they, they know about it. disinclined. <laughs> 
But we have a representative on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone step up and everybody step back. Even though I was supposed to step back. <laughs> Michael, you're doing a great <laughs> job today. <laughs> okay. So, is there anything else that we want to? I mean, do people want to to change the document? I mean, there, there are two levels of things with the with yeah. the trails. One is it is actually acting under the document as it stands. The other is changing the document. And I guess my view is the document's not so bad the way it is. It's 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 it's, 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 it's that nobody's paying attention to it. Right. Yes. So. And I mean, and that, when you. When keep us informed, if you're going to do something on land that we control, we need to know about that ahead of time and say yes or no. Okay. Okay. So, um, like, just an example. The big, <clears throat> one of the things that was a hot topic item on the H11 was keeping our, uh, silt distances away from the brook to the north east of the project and the newest trail goes right up to that brook like right to it and okay well is that breaking the rules i don't know i was like well wait well, we need to we need to figure this out before we get in trouble that's where this all kind of started legally we're okay because harvard the town is in well, if there are claims, if there are damages, according, I'm, you know, I'm just reading right. in the agreement there is. But our, but what we're trying to do, the spirit of what we're trying to yeah. do, is to avoid the, the resources of all these groups are precious and limited. Yeah. We're trying to avoid people wasting time and money. Exactly. And if we communicate and collaborate, we won't, we'll be a lot less likely to do stuff. Absolutely. If it's up front. That's it. Then, then, then there's much less likely to be a problem. Yeah. Which is really our goal, because the indemnification, or you know, that's. No, you're right. right. We, we don't want anybody. To, we don't want anybody getting in trouble. Right. Yeah. No, that's it's it's. Um, but six miles of trails have been developed, and you've never, you with this board, has never been. Other than other than the, the maps, the original maps. The original one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does say in here that we give them permission to have trails on land that we control. And their maps. And the map. Just but like you agree to work cooperatively in the planning, development, operation, and maintenance of those trails. Right. We could be more explicit and have a line saying that any development needs to be Further development needs to be approved by a hardware collector. It does say that. It does say it. Okay. It does say that. No, it says the okay. parties okay. agree to. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm really glad it's said that. Yeah, I'm so glad it said that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the trails that, that they have the right to do are these phase one and phase two, which are the things that are on the map. Oh, that's right. right, right. Okay, um, but but the, the first recital, the parties agree to work cooperatively in the planning, development, operation, and maintenance of hardwood trails. And to work jointly to achieve the goals in one and two above, which uh, and to do a joint plan for development and management of the trails. So, so, so uh, having the, like the group like uh, in Greensboro, or in this case, I mean the most systematic, stable um, organization in like in, in this arrangement is Hardwick Electric, and if maybe a prompt on a, on a, a you know, continuing basis. To whoever the contact person is for the organization, saying that uh, please, just a reminder, any changes, you know, on, on like a bi-monthly basis or something, <laughs> just yeah. just so that it stays, you know, because it's they're volunteer organizations, they're new people, and just whoever that contact person is, oh, that's right. Well, the irony is that we had one of the hardest trails primary people as a commissioner for a couple of years. Uh, and he barely ever mentioned this. <laughs> yeah. David. Yeah. Okay. Um, only so much you can do. 
this. Well, he, you know, he wasn't like your spokesperson or anything. Who's the head of it, Eric? I have no idea. Eric's certainly actively involved. Yeah, I don't know if he's involved. Eric David seem to be the bosses. Yeah. The, the other thing is, in terms of the situation that we find ourselves in with the conservation easement and trying to get changes, I don't remember if it was sent to everybody or not, but Eric had sent an email to Mike and to me saying that what they're primarily concerned about is not so much the loss of use in the winter of the two trails that were mentioned in the conservation easement, but the inability to do any further trails for summer use in, in the area over the 25 year period. So I assume that that's something that you're discussing with Eli? I immediately gave that to Eli and had him talk to the environmental consultant that's working this stuff up and to have that as another alternate path in our evaluation of where we're going to go. Yeah. Uh, can I bring something up, the, the estoppel document? Does that create a, a further obligation I mean, uh, right what, now. What is Stockel Dock? Are you talking about this? The, this are you not talking about the, for, under, for Encore? Correct. Because they're. That's. Well, the, the reason I say it is because uh, it seems as if, uh, I mean, they're operating. Article Electric becomes a party to their expectation. Now, the Stockel document simply says that they're not in default, that Encore isn't in default now. That's all that the, that's all that the. Okay, okay maybe I misinterpreted it. I just yeah. thought it was related. It, no, it no, all, all the estoppel okay. documents, there are two of them. One is for the lease and one is for the uh, PPA. And they both simply say that we don't have any claims against Encore as of the day that they were signed. And the language, it's, it's something that we were required to provide under the underlying agreements. And the language is exactly the language that's in the underlying agreements. I mean, we're not required to provide it if it's not true, but it was true, so we have right. to provide it. And that was what I mean. The underlying agreement may change. So does the what do you mean, mean the meaning the no no it's a it's at a it's at a point in time. It is at a point in time. It's simply saying we can't. Okay, let's let's say that we had sent Encore a bill for something. Right. Okay, and it was due and they were late, and technically they were in breach of the contract because they hadn't paid it, okay? If we send an estoppel letter, estoppel agreement, whatever you want to call it, that says that Encore, as of today, Encore is not in default under the agreement, then we can't, at a later date, go and sue them for that amount. Right. Okay, that's, okay. All, that's okay. all that okay. it says. So it's yeah. a snapshot at a point yeah. in time. Um, and it has nothing to do with the future except that we can't sue them for anything that was at that date in default if we didn't disclose the default. Right. So, so <clears throat> could I invite some of the trails people to our next meeting? Would that be... Why, why, why don't we have this on the agenda for the when we meet with the select board? Since this is with both, and, and tell them we're proposing. And the, yeah, and see see what. If yeah, that, they might say yes or. Let's go to two months. That's great. But yeah. Like a mic. Then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think the agreement is probably fine. It just yeah. needs to be followed. Okay. And I think when we're with them, one of the things, one of us, I'll ask it if, if I remember, which is, you know, it sounds like since 2003, as they've built the trails and managed the trails and raised money for the trails, they've created an organizational entity that's not envisioned in the MOU. And it's probably that entity we want to be meeting with. Yeah. 
Because I don't think Hayes and Union High School is the entity anymore. Right. Well, well, well they originated it, but it's but not it's, yeah, it's now, there's some entity. It's, 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 it's referenced in here. It's referenced in here. It's the parties that we agree to work jointly through the creation and support of a Hardrick Recreation Trail Committee. And that committee is yeah. a and, we need and to that's we want. Now, what we might want to do, but again, this would be something to discuss, is amend this to include the Trails Committee as a party to this. Yeah, let's figure sense. out how they operate. Yeah. Let's figure out how they yeah. organize how they operate. And we yeah, I mean, that's... Okay. Anything else on... Billings Road or any of this? Okay. So we go to the Select Board meeting. So we have one agenda item. Um... Are there other agenda item, items that folks would like to propose? I think one should be clarity of the separation of HED and select board. So it's clear to a lot of people know it, but new people won't. New people like me, new people on the select board committee. They should understand what the break line is, and who's responsible for what, and even who owns what, because I know there's confusion. So responsibility and ownership. Yeah, all the information exists, it's just not clear in one spot that someone would say, oh, I understand that. Well, I, I don't think some of it is even agreed upon. Well, that too. Well. And if it's not, let's get it. How do you go about resolve that? Yeah. Well, first, yeah, then, yeah. if it doesn't get resolved because no one's identified it, you know, it's, it's, enough people have to say, yeah, that is an issue, let's resolve it. I think right. people have, they have their idea, we have our idea, and it goes that way, and it never gets resolved. So between the town and HED. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's enough for an agenda right there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. A few yeah. agendas, but yeah. anyway. I think a it could be the relationship between HED board and general manager. Because I think the selectmen may think that they can come to us as opposed to Mike if they're supposed to, or vice versa. And I think that clarity is important. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good point. And what's, um, yeah, and we have a new town manager. We have a new town manager. Which is good. Would he be in this meeting? He'll be at the oh, meeting. Yeah, he'll, yeah, be, he'll be, be at the right, meeting. Yeah. So this will benefit him. Too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Because he thinks they own the beach. That's why I said they think they own the beach. He's like, oh, oh, the beach. I don't think they own the beach. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so this is very important. Okay. Lenny's a, he's a nice guy, the nicest guy you want to meet. Oh, absolutely. And he's a super guy, so you know, you can't say anything there. So communications it's between the town and yes. HED. <laughs> yes. Select board. HED board. Town manager. And the general manager. Yeah. So do you want to communicate that to Casey Rowell, or <clears throat> she's the person who invited us to that meeting? Oh yeah, no. Well, well, I think I think it'll go out. There was something. One of the emails. I don't remember which one that. But I'll, yeah, I will send something. I think I'll send it to Eric. Oh, okay. I think he's. There's so another piece of history for you, Mike. <clears throat> right when I started, uh, the gentleman that was chairman of this board uh, went to war with the town over the beach because the town was talking about selling it. <laughs> and he told the town, we're going to sue it because we own it. And that was the end of that. Uh, he, got, he got booted off the board, but... <laughs> You got, it all got clarified back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm sure you looked at this, the, the town charter and the state statute. I mean, that's a good basis for discussion. But it doesn't specifically mention land. It just mentions plant. Land is part of electric plant. Yeah. It, been to, some of the deeds talk about the, Village of Hardwick. I think all of the deeds. Yeah, almost and, all. And in the def, in the definition, right? In the definition of plant, it doesn't. But, it here, actually, but here's the issue with that. 
<clears throat> so back in the day, the village of Hardwick consisted of the electric department, which was fully staffed office, general manager, superintendent, full line crew, our own trimming crews, did the contracting in and out, full set of shift workers at the Wolcott Hydro, a full set of shift workers at the Hardwood Diesel Plant, utility workers, meter readers, and there was a bunch of people working at Hardwood Electric. Half the town. And there was three guys, the road crew, the village road crew. <coughs> Tom Fadden's dad was one of them, he's the road foreman for the town now. And they took care of the village streets and roads in the winter and in the summer. And that's all they did. There was no revenue. Hardwood Electric paid for everything that the village there, I think, you know, bless you. Um, I think the discussion, I'm a little bit reluctant to have a discussion about ownership, frankly, at that meeting, because I don't think we necessarily have a view of what our position is on ownership. Um, and, and I think it would be a mistake to go into a discussion with, with. Well, they, but I like the way Michael framed it. I'd agree with you if I thought it was going to go into an, an, a debate on the spot. But I like what Michael said, which is let's identify if there's differing views. Let's say, okay, we see there are differing views. Let's not try to resolve them here. Right. But let's agree that we should resolve them. But if there are differing views within this board, or between this board and the general manager on ownership. I would hope that we would be able to get a, get a view before we find oh, out whether I, our I view was, differs I wasn't, I wasn't from, from, okay. from, from the select board's view. Well, I think that just reinforces where Michael was coming from. If, yeah, if we have a, it doesn't matter where there's right. lack of clarity, we should have clarity. With us. Is there, do you know if there's any case law to clarify? There's no case, there's no case law. There is a letter that Mike sent around from an attorney who is viewed as the guru on these issues. Paul Giuliani. Paul Giuliani, yes. <laughs> who is... <laughs> Close call. I personally, stylistically, yeah. I, I would not object to having it on the agenda okay. as long as all of us are welded at the hip that we're not going to get into a debate. Right. We're just yeah. going to say, yeah, this is an important thing for us all to see the same way. It's important to the town, it's important to us, and we're supportive of, of, an, of an effort to get clarity. Uh, again, historically, there have been there's been difficulty in seeing it the same way. That's, so. I mean, that's what the point that Mike <laughs> yeah, was yeah. highlighting, and we can we can do it. I uh, but I I, I it's. Yeah. You're you're forewarning us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's also. I hear you. <laughs> it's not necessarily relevant, but it's important as kind of background information. We are financially a much larger corporation now, whatever we are, as hard to collect than the town. I mean, our budget is. It's not necessarily relevant. I don't know it's if we. It's not necessarily relevant, but it's information again for a new person. We're about four or five times as big as the town. We we are we are part of the town. We are not separate from the town. Right, we're all the same. And and and, and we 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 when we go out and do a bond separate. issue, it's the town that's doing a bond issue. It's not Hardwick Electric. Financially, we're separate. Our books are separate. Our revenue is separate. One of the aspects of ownership is control and disposition of the land. And in the statute, it says that any sale of land has to be approved by the voters of Hardwick. So that means that Hardwick Electric doesn't have con that control over the land. I mean, it, it raises. In the, in the electric department thing, it says that, that we can't sell land? No, it doesn't. It, it says it in the state statute. Where in the state statute? In the no, in okay. the town charter? No, not in the town charter. The, you have to. You have to let's not. But then, okay, then, the then I'm not going to get into a discussion. The statute of, enabling the town charter. I mean, the the statute enabling what the town charter does with the utilities. Uh, it, that's not what that section. Does, but anyway. Um, I read it earlier today. That's fine, Vince. I. I
Hardwick Electric's name is not on the deeds. Okay? It doesn't say Town of Hardwick Electric Department on the deeds. And that's usually how fee simple ownership is determined, is who is on the title. But we have a very different situation here because, and this is, and this is what I'm paraphrasing Giuliani's letter. We control, we have custody, we have control, we have care and management of the land. The land cannot be sold without our consent. The land can't be sold without the PUC's consent. But we can't sell the land without the town's consent and the PUC's consent. It takes all three. That's my reading of what, of what Giuliani's letter had said. Um, and it's... I don't, think anybody, I don't think anybody wants to sell it. Right. No, well, but it's not just a case of selling. It's a case of disposing of land. You know, you can transfer interests in land as well. And I don't think we need to get into that discussion right now. I think we have other things that we need to be talking about. Um, but I think it's, it's a, my point is simply it's going to be a very complicated thing and uh, I think it's recognized that there's an issue but we can certainly raise it, at, you know, have that on the agenda for discussion. Um, when will it you seems think like getting to, getting to clarity on it, I'm not pretending in the meeting and get to clarity, yeah. but getting, getting to clarity will help pre preempt Absolutely. some of the controversies that have come up over the years. Yeah. No, you I, know, mm -hmm. Whether it's in Greensboro with the beach or... Yeah, it may well be you know, some, of the, some of the uh, select board may have a very different notion. Yeah. Uh, they may think they own everything. I, I don't know what they think. I know. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's worth. And and and, yeah. and we know. We know that that there have been. You know, there was a prior town manager who thought that he was a commissioner, right. uh, ex officio, and uh, there's at least one member of the select board thinks that the town manager is. And oh, really? Even today? Yeah. Oh well, then this is going to be good. So it's, no, it's no, <laughs> that's no, absolutely. It's no, that's not true. Clarification. What's yeah, yes no I, I I I agree but I'm just I'm by way of example so I think I think it's a I th I think it's certainly on separation of responsibilities and that there is an owner, an issue about I think I, the way I would put it is that ownership is 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 very messy Integrity. and and it would be good to clean it up. It'll it'll be hard. We've yeah. tr we tried. I mean, we tried. What was it? Eight years ago? And I've tried. I mean, I, and it isn't like anybody's putting forward an opinion. Now. Just here's the facts. Here's the data. Um, and and that the council and it just keeps going back around. No kidding. It's no. Just, it just every every couple of years yeah, it pops up, and so I would love to see it, it it cleaned up one way or another. Yeah. Um, it was almost is worthwhile bringing. Uh, Filing suit to have a judicial clarification. No. No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. It's a I'm bad kidding. joke. Vince isn't allowed to talk at this next. <laughs> no, no, that was a, that was a, just a. Take it as a, it's very tongue in cheek. You can't see my tongue in my cheek. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Okay. Are there any questions? On the general manager's report, are we on? Yeah. Yes. Well, that NEPSA is working to schedule a meeting. Yeah, I'd be interested. Oh, that got set today. Oh. oh. Yeah, when is that? I, oh, I can tell you. Oh, technology.
Tuesday, December 6th at 10 a.m. Ah, my wife's having surgery the same day. And what so are you that, calling it? You're calling the... It's a leg uh, legislative meeting with Hart Electric, Lindenville Electric, and all our local legislators and vets. So will you send out a Zoom link and reminder when it's available? Uh, it, it, all we did was confirm the date today, and I'm sure Julia at BEPS is going to set the whole thing up, and I'll forward that information to you. Great. Do you have a, is there already an agenda? or? A... No. Nope, did you, did you say 12, okay. 12, 6? 10 a.m. December 6th. That's a Monday. Yeah. Okay. So. Is it, is it December 6th? Is it Monday or Tuesday? December 6th. December 6th. So it's Monday. So I was a little surprised to see that the coverage in August was only 85%. Yeah. It's odd. The big, uh, one of the big factors was that we didn't get uh, Wolka back online as planned because of the foundation being a lot worse than what anybody expected. So, as a result, we had to buy more on the spot market. Which was good. We, we came out ahead, 33000 a month. Even though the energy prices went up? Yeah. Kind of an odd. I noticed also that our <clears throat> the line item <clears throat> in the finances says cash. $1,571,000. Where's that pile of cash? In the bank. In, in one account. We have one account. That's it. One operating account. Mike, Mike can you refresh? Because I can't remember. Because I remember we talked a number of years ago. There was a concern that our balances are way above the FDIC. insurance level. Yeah. yeah. And we got. Com Do you remember how we got comfortable with having balances? Yeah. yeah I got. A, I got documentation from the bank, and. I can't tell you the exact frequency, but I, I would almost say it's daily. They buy this insurance daily, and we're, we are covered huh. uh, via this other one. And I have those documents I can give it to you. Can you verify that that's still their procedure? Because yeah. we, I, uh, really, if we have that much cash, might we want to consider paying off some of our debt? And we've got very low interest that? rate. No. no. You know, because I mean, our, we're so far into our debt, it's all it's all principal that we're paying now. Now, if we were going to incur, incur some more debt, okay, it's a good time to incur debt, right? Right. So, so we're near the end of. You know, we're going to be spending a lot of that money here within the next three months, and then we have a huge AMI project coming. Then we have what? AMI. Yeah. As long as you brought that up. So is that going to be, do you anticipate that being part of the VEPSA agenda? The uh, going over the oh, AMA the discussion? implementation? Yeah, well, I, I've been pushing really hard because the only reason, and this is no, no exaggeration, the only reason that uh, the other utilities in Vermont have AMI is because they got a huge federal subsidy to do so when they did it about mm. 10, 12 years ago. So I've been pushing at BEPSA along with the rest of the managers and Ken to try and get some of this money that's floating around to help the municipal electricity uh, utilities get some money to do these programs too, which fell flat on its face on the first pass, but it seems to be getting some traction now and that will definitely be a topic at this meeting. Traction Absolutely. within VEPSA or traction with our legislators? Legislators. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Because I mean, it's, yeah, money. it's huge. Because they still have control of quite a pile of it that hasn't been deep out yet. Mike, could you could you put something together and send to all of the commissioners? We all we of the all of the commissioners, all of us. Okay, there, we had discussed when when the suit was settled. Yeah and that we were going to be looking at how those monies might be used. And you were going to put together a list of projects and you mentioning that of this million plus dollars that a lot of it's going to be spent in the next three months. First of all, how is it going to be spent? What are the, project, what are the projects? What are the budgeted amounts for those projects? 
Um, I didn't say three months. Oh, yeah, I thought you said, said the coming months. Oh, the coming months. Six okay. months. Six, all right, six months. I, I don't care whether it's three months or six yeah. months. We're talking about spending that kind of money. We need to know what it is before commitments are made. Um, and, um, but also, we had talked about how the funds might be used to benefit ratepayers, and that we were going to discuss alternatives. And you're the best person to be yeah. the thought leader on that. So here's how I think. Number one, <coughs> the number one target for me on utilization of that money right now, if we were to say, hey, let's do something tomorrow, would be to go close the deal on the last piece of the transmission and buy into the uh, stove tie so we can start benefiting from that transmission line purchase that we just made. And how much is that going to cost? That's going to be like 300000 And what are the benefits of that? Once that is complete, we end up saving about $175,000 a year for our Oh, that's family. great. <laughs> can we invest in that? <laughs> <laughs> so it was that the transfer from, from GMP? Yeah, getting off GMP and having our own tie to Valco. Valco is the bulk power provider in the state. Right. And we don't have a tie to them, so we have to pay transmission guy in between. Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna have our own But if you could if you could give us the sure. analysis of that and, and anything yeah. and, and what number two and number three are. Yeah. Um and as far as the AMI goes, uh, possible uses for the implementation, like demand side control, uh, peak shaving with distributed, uh, like, you know, storage control. So I mean, there's the hydro and this transmission, and rebuilding the existing transmission we just built, which needs it, is. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, projects. wasn't you know wasn't asking to. Yeah. Understood. I'm just saying. I, my, Can we my do that is, next meeting? That seems yeah. tougher. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Sure, but in, you know, in here, one point five million dollars. Yeah, that's a nice number, but it's in the utility business. It's not a lot of money. Yeah. So. But but I think the key, the key the spirit of it, I think is. It's not doing having money parked in the bank isn't no, doing the rate payers any good. And the faster, without rushing, the faster we get our bearings and put it to use. I have a plan. Yep. That's great. Okay. So I'm putting this as my number one for next meeting. Yeah, yeah. That would be a great meeting. And month to month we continue to be doing well compared to budget. Okay, and the uh, the A Clara AMI um, SAS SAS that was selected by APSA. So <coughs> the committee that I'm on at BEPSA evaluated uh, 13, 11 bidders. <clears throat> the AMI project, we whittled that down to two, and then ended up uh, with a Clara. And their product is that them and ABB are probably the two best product. Or not ABB is now Elster, but Elster and a Clara are the two leading entities. Um, at the time we were doing this, El uh, Elster didn't offer water. And several of the BEPS members need water and sewer, oh, uh, okay. water and electric meters, so that took them out of the running, and that's why we went into the clear. Well, is is, but are they better for us? I mean, the fact, in other words, yeah. the, because it's irrelevant for us whether a water and sewer, right. um, unless we want to do something with the town, you know. Um, so it, it's. If, if they're second best, if we, the reason that they went with them, this, the company, is because they do water and sewer and the other bidder didn't. But if the other bidder is better for all electric, then wouldn't we want to go with the all electric one? Yeah, but they're not, they're not any better. Okay. So, 
Were you able to get a better bid price having, you know, the... Right. Doing it as a joint action, we get better meter pricing. We get to have one uh, software license. We share all those costs. So instead of paying a dollar, we pay 10% of a dollar. So it's an annual license. So, so we don't have. A, will we have a sub license or or? The VEPSA is for all. The license is for VEPSA for all of us. And we'll be paying a prorated amount. Yeah. But if, if we choose to participate, we aren't even there yet. Okay, I guess what I'm asked. Yeah, I would want to know if that license is if the sub license is transferable to us. I'm not. I'm not saying that we're ever going to pull out of VEPSA, but. That's happened with, Could happen. with it Absolutely. can happen, and on something like that, if we're making an investment in AMI, we don't want to be in a situation where it's like health insurance, where yeah. we have to stay with VEPSA because we, yeah. in order to keep our metering system. And, and our, so Ken yeah. is um, uh, Lemmerhart Consulting has done a lot of work on this with the committee that I'm on. <coughs> Jackie Lemmerhart is the president. And she has built a business model for every one of the VEPSA members that she's fine-tuning with Ken to get them as accurate as they can. I've already done my part, and she'll be coming to present with Ken to all of you on that. One question, because I don't know that she's going to be the person to answer that, though, is about the license on 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 the software on using this 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 system because Ken will know. Okay, and, it Ken's the guy. Okay. And proprietary uh, yeah, proprietary equipment, proprietary software, ability to export all the data, all that stuff. It's you all know. proprietary, absolutely. Okay, so you're basically bound yep. to them. That's right. Okay, so they, their meters. I mean, they. I mean, it is a standard protocol. AMI is a standard protocol for data gathering, correct? So even if it's their meters, you can still pull the data. Well, uh, yes and no. Some vendors uh, can use vendor X and vendor Y's meters as well as theirs. Some other vendors can only use their own meters. Uh, Clara makes their own meters, and they use one other vendor. So we have an option for meters. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as far as getting that data into your meter data management system, depends on whose meter data management system you have and what module you put in your meter. So there's all these little lines you have to line up per your choices. Um, and whoever your, your, your vendor is, is going to say, these are your choices with us, or this is your only choice with us. But Eclair has more than one choice. So they aren't necessarily compatible with Siemens or Landis or? Right. Like they, they're, they're in the process of making a deal. They can't disclose it, but we believe it's with Landis and Gear. So an LNG meter or a Clara meter will work on our system. Did but that's still not dead set. They're working on it. And, and any alternatives that aren't as proprietary and don't require, you know, basically you're, you're, to some extent, you're stuck with this continuing license rather than, I, I know you were talking about uh, some open, it wasn't, a, it was an open source alternative. Laura, that's the one I was testing. Yeah, and <clears throat> they actually just moved that. They they, um, they think there was a glitch in the gateway, which is basically the radio receiver. So we mounted another one in there. We actually just got it online this afternoon. So cool. Uh, they're still playing with that and it hasn't been completely ruled out. But I'm not holding my breath like I was because I think it should have worked a lot better up on the hill than it did. We'll see. And that one is open architecture, which is one of the reasons I was really interested. Right. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I, I don't know about anyone else, but the fully committing to something that is that closed a system and proprietary system can be, well, it's really expensive and it can be really limiting. It is really expensive. That's what we're trying to do as a joint action and save some money. Right. Well, so and we'll have a presentation yeah, from. So on. let's 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 yeah. let's okay. wait for that on the details. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I had was something that wasn't in your report, Mike, which was that you've hired somebody new, a major position. Yeah. Uh, when does she start? What is she going to be coming to board meetings? What's the story? Did you get my email with all her stuff? I got yeah, but it didn't say when she was. When is she starting? The first week in November. It's in there. Okay. It's in there. I did. I missed. I missed that. Okay. 
And is she going to be coming to our meetings? She will be coming to our meetings. Okay. So, and, but she's, oh, by Zoom. I, by Zoom. Uh, we can probably flex her schedule around so she can be here. Okay, for the great. Uh, be here. But some, yeah, some of it will certainly be remote. The agreement is that she will be in Harvard um, at least half the time. No less than 50%. No less than 50% of our work time. Okay. 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 That's a long commute. Before we go <laughs> into executive session, did you want to say anything about your small pond? Oh, I, I'm happy to share a long time you sound fun, yeah. So <clears throat> I got invited to a meeting, public meeting in Virginia the other day, and Nat came with me, and it was about a um, pretty large group of people <clears throat> with camps and uh, that own property around East Long Pond, and they are talking about forming a lake association, and so they were trying to gather information for this lake association. So I got invited there, and I was really there to listen more than anything, and then I was introduced as basically the guest speaker, <laughs> um, which was fine, and I, I said, you know, I'm here to share information and, uh, and facts, and I don't know at all, but I can tell you what I know. And I tried to do that, and I was very happy that I went because I think it would have been a nuclear bomb the next day if I hadn't gone. There was a lot of misconceptions, a lot of non-clarity. Um, basically, these people are legitimately concerned about the pond that they love and, and use and their families love and use and don't want to see it harmed in any way from water clarity to the dam failing anything happening there. Um, and they really grabbed on to um, the dam safety reports by the dam safety engineer of the state of Vermont as kind of a way to uh, maybe manipulate the situation or work the, the situation so that <clears throat> they can accomplish their goal of keeping this pristine thing perfect. Um, and I can totally understand that. Um, that being said, they are, at least a couple of them, are under the impression that the dam is ready to fall over, which is simply not true. Um, it's a 125-year-old dam that's in amazing condition for its age. and. Pretty much the the two main things that the dam safety engineer, you know, because I'm talking to the guy, he's not writing his report to me, but the two things are making sure vegetation is removed from the dam, anything within 20 feet of the waterway or the spillway, because the root systems are the biggest enemy to a dam out there, which we do. Uh, that and getting larger than basketball size rocks into a spillway because in the spring when the ice and stuff comes over the spillway it constantly is pushing the rocks out and eventually we'll get to the point where it undermines the back of the concrete. So every few years I hire the, the tree guys to go in there and carry rocks in all day um, but it's really not very effective. You know, how many rocks are you going to carry before you keel over? And there's no road to get there. Uh, there's a trail, uh, but it isn't like you're going to drive a dump truck with an excavator on a trailer out there. I mean, it's, a, it's a goat trail. So we're very limited in what we can do to you know, work on the dam. That being said, I, I personally believe it's in phenomenal condition. It's, uh, it's basically it's an earthen dam. It has one concrete wing wall on the spillway. Then it's earthen over to the main sluice, and then it's earthen all the other way. The earthen portions are made of maybe chair-sized boulders. So it's this huge pile of piles of woodbury granite scraps that they put earth in front of, and poured a couple of concrete 
pieces. One is the main spillway. The other one is the sluiceway, right in the middle of the dam. And when Woodbury Granite was active, every morning they'd open the sluiceway and let all the water flush. It would go down, pass through Nichols. They had a big sawmill down there. They did cut all the wood all day long. Water continued down to Macville, went down to Penstock, made 600 kW of hydro generation energy. They also had a one megawatt steam, coal burning steam turbine in there. And all that power went to Woodbury Granite's sheds over here and processed all the granite. At the end of the work day, they closed the sluice, let it fill back up overnight. The next day, they do it again. Those, those days are over. You know, we can't mess with any water levels. Everything has to be run of the river. What nature gives you is what you get. So if the thing, if the pond is spilling over the spillway, that's what it does. If it's not spilling and all you're getting is some seepage through the sluice gate, that's what you get. So <clears throat> we did, it's never been used to make power. We ended up with it as part of the purchase of the whole Woodbury granite that became Green Mountain Power property, which became Village of Hardwood property. And for us to go in there and say, put in a new sluice gate, which I don't know how we would even get one out there at this point, because it's you have to, you have to hike there. Um, I would guess that would be no less than $100,000 just to change a sluice gate on this little tiny dam. Is, is, is this land either the dam or the surrounding land that we own? I, and I'm using the word ownership, and you know, this is all part of what you just laid out. Is, is there likely to be any plan to ever use this for electric purposes? Because if not... I would say no. Why do we, why do we own it? Why, 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 do, why should, I mean, either let the town have it and deal with it, or, you know, we all sell it and put the money to good use? I, I just... Uh, yeah, I'm totally with you, Lynn, and that's... This, um, well, is that something that we should also include on the agenda for oh, the meeting of the select board? If I, if I get into detail on that, I'd want to do it in an executive session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would that be along with Macville? Or just... No, it would be just that. I guess this is just a, a chit-chatter. What in 1947 from Green Oh, yeah. So let's so, walk through so, the pictures. Yeah. So that's the first one you have yeah. is the is the spillway. Okay. And so that's, this is and, where you and walk. That's, and that's the boulders. Yep. That's the boulders. So this is all the earthen the first earthen part. So here's a couple aerial views. So this is so this is the dam. No, nope. this is the dam. Okay. And that's a zoom in on it. Just like spring excavation, this part right here. Spring excavation. You know, this is the dam right here. Yeah. In the next page. So it doesn't actually connect to, to Nichols Pond, or there's a stream. There's, there's a stream, a stream. that runs that yeah. runs through. I mean, I mean, water erosion, like right down the hole here. So yeah, this this picture that Vince is looking at with Reno and our timbers in there. So that, yeah. this is actually the sluice way. Okay. The gate operator is up here where these guys are. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. there's a little there. and you can see the... Yeah. Yep. And as an adder, this year, because at this meeting, sorry, mm -hmm. at this meeting we had the other day in Woodbury, um, one of the issues that one of the property owners brought up was that the dam was falling over. And, you know, I've been out, I don't know, I mean, I've been out there as much as anybody else, I think. And it all looks the same as it did to me nine years ago. But, uh, in response to his loudly voiced concern, I will say. Cold. Yeah, we, we added those pressure-treated timbers 
in the pictures I showed you just last week or this week to last week to have something in there permanent that okay well they're still sitting there and they were there last year so nothing has moved mm. so at least there's some kind of a gauge where well those things got crushed and there's rocks sitting there what's going on he, he was implying that the walls were falling down and they're not so anyway, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more brewing about this, and uh, at least you guys have a basic idea of where it is and what it is, and, and uh, okay. there are some other things brewing that I will be bringing to everybody's attention in an executive session. Okay. But that's, like I said, it's brewing. It's probably two or three months out. But I can certainly give you an update on it in a brief session, if you like. We'll we'll have have that call is I stole somebody's pencil. Okay. Yeah, well, well, I remember reading the state the dam report, but I can't remember. I mean, it was no imminent. Right, that, that's the issue. Yeah. But, in, in, you know, in all, in all fairness, the engineer has to put anything and everything in there to, you know, and, and I get that. But the practicality when you're standing there talking to him and he says, oh, this, that, this, that, that, okay. Dam is inspected every year by by the dam states dam safety engineer, and they write a report. Yep. Okay. And it got circulated to a lot of the people who live around the pond, apparently for the first time, 2019 report, <laughs> and so they were very nervous. They that picked point. out the Mike, alarm you, sorry. sorry, you had said in an email that you wanted to discuss a regulatory matter, a PUC matter. Uh, I had one issue to update you on that from Eli's work. Okay. Yep. Have to do that. You ready? Yep. Okay. So we have a <clears throat> we have a customer complaint that went through. It was about trimming some trees that went through a full um, consumer affairs division at the Vermont uh, Department of Public Service where. <clears throat> they represent the ratepayer, and we represent ourselves, and we try to resolve the issue. And so the customer made their complaint. I met with the crew, responded to the complaint after I got my information from them. And I think there was probably a couple follow-ups to questions and whatnot. And the department agreed with Hardwick Electric, yep, you're, she's wrong, you're right. Okay, great. So then a year, about a year went by, and the customer ended up filing a complaint with the Public Utility Commission, which is the next step. If the customer's not happy, they can go the next step and take it to the PUC, which they did, and we're in the middle of, not in the middle, we're coming to the end of the discovery on that piece. And the issue is our guys were out cutting the right away, our contractors. And the customer showed up and said, you're not cutting any of my trees. The guy said, OK, and left, as they should. And they're not supposed to engage in any arguments with customers. Or whatever. So they go and call our guy, the foreman. He said, yeah, just keep going. Go back to wherever the next spot is. And we left it, and a year later, this customer called and wanted those trees cut down, the same ones we weren't allowed to touch. So Brian went down and met with them and said, and said "Yep, yeah, we're gonna, we'll come do our work that we were gonna do, no problem. We'd like to get these out of here." <clears throat> so within a few work days. Contractors got pulled out of Wolcott somewhere where they were working, sent down to Woodbury, got there to do their work, and the customer wouldn't allow them to do their work. Nobody scheduled this job with me, get out of here. So they left. So that's twice we've been down there trying to do the job, can't get it done. <coughs> and that that's when the the whole capping process started. I don't know how I got off my time timeline there. That's the history of how it came about. Now it's in front of the PUC. All the discovery is done and basically the PUC is trying to uh,
confirm that we um, are following our procedures and protocols and doing things the way we should be doing, which we are, and they'll be ruling on that. Whatever they say we're going to do, we'll do, or if they say you're all set, then we're all set. So, so on, on, on this kind of thing, if, if, if the crew goes out to trim trees, and the customer says no. Do they do a some kind of a memo or a notation that they've been out there, and the customer said no? I mean, do we have those things in writing or? No, that's totally between the contractor and our form. They work out their daily thing and what they're doing. I don't get involved. But no, but so this is just people do these things based on memory. There's no procedure. Correct. There's no procedure that if a cust if if you're scheduled to go here and the customer says go away. There's no notation customer said to leave. No. No, I think it would be I'm sorry? It would be good to have some kind of... It would be very good to have some kind of... Uh, form. What does the customer want, Mike? So the full history, as I understand it, is <coughs> the customer put an addition on their house, a small addition, which one of these trees is really endangering. Also, put the addition came into our right away, which the customer says we don't have a right away. <clears throat> which it's not our pole line, it's a consolidated communications pole line. We're a joint owner. It's not our responsibility to get the right away, it's consolidated. So if they have an issue with right away, it's not with us, it's a consolidated. Yeah. That being said, the line was built in 1968, and this customer's father asked to be connected to the line in 1969. We have proof of that. And now this customer is saying we have no right to be there and the line should have never been built there. And that's one of the issues as well. That and the trees are endangering her property and creating a hazard. But we're not responsible for cutting people's trees that are causing their home a hazard. <laughs> Are these the same tree you wanted to trim? We wanted to cut them down. Yeah. And I'll show you. <laughs> they're, they're close to the primary, no question about it. But they're not an imminent hazard. They're not. The trees aren't climbable by kids. Or So these are pictures of trees. Can I give you two? I don't I know what you gave me a lot. Of this. Gave two. Okay. So the first one, you can see a primary conductor, and this is like yeah. two inches or less. Hey, it looks like tree. it's almost on the tree. Yeah. The next one uh, is an example of side trimming where the wires are very close to the tree. You just take the lens off on the side of the tree. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is fine, that tree isn't, nobody's going to climb that, or, you know, so there's no risk there. And taking that tree down will probably be 900 to 1,000 bucks. These are big trees. Yeah, big yeah. trees. This one, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the primary conductor here is only just a couple inches of the tree. Okay. That tree right there would probably be 2,500 to 2,700 to cut down. So and big white lines. Right, it's not posing an imminent threat to the line. And even if it did come down, it would break a pole, which costs us about 300 bucks. So you'd rather spend that money in trimming the rest of the right way than wasting it all on one tree that's not an imminent hazard. Is this stuff close to her house? None of this is in our service territory. Oh. These are examples. Oh, these are examples. These aren't the what, the trees that we're talking about. We're getting there. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're getting there. This one yeah. is two trees that have been laying on the primary conductor for well over a year that I drive by every day in another utility service territory. Oh, oh wow. Service territory, so we can clean it up. Big maples. And this one is the trees we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. All those new air poles. Okay. Probably 10 or 12 inches from the primary, but yeah. it is not going to climb that tree. Uh, it's not going to fall over tomorrow. It's pretty healthy. The one that is a risk is the next one behind it, which you can see is leaning right over her house. Yeah. Yeah. Which we wouldn't cut down anyway. We would take the limbs off that are the closest to our line and keep moving. That must be missing. So that's the crux of that whole thing. Okay. Oh, no, I don't have that one. 
Well, the picture before this is <laughs> so if we don't provide the service and we don't own oh, the pole we were talking about, why are we even involved in it? Because the customer has the right to file a complaint. And the, and the PUC doesn't have any kind of a of a. Yeah, I thought we did the service. Uh, triage. They uh, they are uh, they are still in the discovery, and, and so we've filed. We've given I've given them all this stuff. And, uh, but they but but they can't you know they can't just look at and say this isn't even their property. They may, it's still with the hearing officer, then. so he oh, kind of okay. he kind of gathers everything and then he'll yeah. write an opinion and he gives it to them and usually they go with whatever that opinion is. They're all no. I, I I I was wondering if there's any kind of a summary judgment yeah. procedure at, at the PUC. No, they where still go through their they go through their everything. Yeah. and you know it's. If the PUC tells us to go cut them down, it won't hurt our feelings. I mean, no. We wanted to do that to begin with. But we're not going to run down there and have guys get kicked off the job and waste two hours of the day and mess them around. So. Who provides the electricity? What? what do oh, you? we do? Yeah. Oh, I think you said we do. Okay. We do. We it's don't it's own the, the, phone comp the phone we company own the owns the polls. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else related to I have one question on the manager's report from the very end. Um, and it came up with respect to all the, the big dam project. What do you use or what does the industry use as a guideline for what sorts of expenses to take to your PL as an expense? And when can you what's your threshold or guideline for when you can wrap it together into a capital project? Um, and it's really, it's, it's the same dollars, but the accounting for the dollars um, can be different. In industry, there's pretty clear guidelines. Yeah, and I don't know. No, ours are defined. They're, so how, yeah, how does it apply when you're doing, because it seems like what you're doing on the, the dam is a big life extension. 30 year. Yeah. That'll be a 30 year investment. If, it, if it's, yeah. If it's, so we, have a, we have a chart that we have to go by. Good. That, that uh, Jeff Graham, I think, built for us. Right. But it's, it's, so it's, a lot it's of work. The, like all this concrete. Yes, but it, it's a schedule of uh, depreciation on specific. Oh, okay. the, oh, well, but this isn't, this isn't depreciation. No, I was talking about this what, what do you capitalize and what do you expect? What, what? So right. all that capitalize it over these many years. It's but no, 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 no. The issue is the what gets capitalized. And, what and, my, gets expensed. and my recollection from the FERC regs, unless they may have changed, I haven't looked at them in quite a number of years. It was if it was if it was an asset that was more than a year, or it was a year or more in terms of the life of of the asset that it was capitalized, right. and otherwise it was expensed. So, so the, what triggered it for me was when you said the wool cut. We're going to start processing payments for wool cut foundation project. Yeah, that shouldn't affect our P and L. That shouldn't. No. Affect, that should just go into a that's big ca that's capital. capital so, so what happened was the because this turned into more than they expected too. <clears throat> they were actually supposed to be out of there by now, but they asked for a progress payment, mm -hmm. and I said no. I never agreed to any progress payment, but I'm open to discussing a progress payment if X Y Z and one two three, and we worked out X Y Z and one two three. And I did actually just process that uh, Friday for payment this week. So. But your bookkeeper will know oh, yeah. not to put it into the yeah. the PL. So we'll yeah, basically they have a lot of money tied up in there right now and we're hoping to at least cover like their material expenses and I was yeah, yeah. it's all there. So. Yeah, but this Good, isn't this it. isn't a payment issue. This is this is this is whether it goes into No but it, whether it's an expensed item or a capital Yeah, the cap. last sentence here, yeah. it presents it as an expense. Okay, yeah. It's not uh, going to be expense, that's capital. Right. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's, a, that's a little e it's, it's expensive. That's more year-to-date costs. <laughs> you read it as year-to-date costs instead of expenses. It's not an expense in an accounting sense. Right, correct. Yeah, that isn't what I meant. Yeah, got it. It'll use some of the cash balance, but it won't. It won't enter the P and L. Correct. Right. Got it. Okay. Uh, anything else on the general manager's report? 
in which case, um, Jim, I think we're going to be going into executive session. Um, so I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss a confidential customer matter. Okay, it is 7... Six. 36, I'm at an angle, six. <laughs> uh, 636, thank you. Uh, and we are now in executive session, let me just... <clears throat> 